popularized by guys like Bill Sickles back in the 30s and 40s. Um, Batman was one of the last groups to use that, I think. Okay, so uh, it was being written by Whitney Ellsworth, who used to be the Whitney editorial Ellsworth. director. Right. Um, did you talk to Whit at all about this? Oh, yeah. 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 We discussed it. He was a wonderful gentleman, terrific. I, I know very little about him. I mean, yeah. you know, he had been the editorial director and went out to California to work on the Superman show. And when the show ended, he sort of stayed out in California. And, and, right, and he was mailing the scripts. Right. And we discussed the. Uh, Sequences. And I remember him saying to me, Joe, I want you to design Batman Hilton Hotel. <laughs> that was one of the strips, right? Wow. <laughs> yeah. It really was easy. Just, just make a pool in the shape of a bat. <laughs> <laughs> he calls me up and says, Joe, oh, that's, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't much in that, but just make. Make a fool of shit. <laughs> in a hotel, the same way, you had the bat signal on top of the hotel. <laughs> now, the, the strip obviously was because of the popularity of the TV show, and some right. of the, the approach that we took to it was to ape the TV show. Uh, were you watching the show at the time? He, yes. What did you think? Yeah. Well, I mean, I looked at it, it's, it's, it's comics, biff, bang, boom. But you see, when I was doing the Batman strip, I didn't do it that way originally. Right. See, I I did it a straight adventure style, and uh, and uh, who called me? Oh, John Higgins, the the head the, the head of uh, the uh, Ledger Syndicate. It's the one who actually picked my work in the comics. He said, "I want this artist on a Batman strip." That's why Moore called me. See, and uh, so uh, uh, let me say. Uh, Oh, oh yeah, he says, Joe, uh, we would like uh, the strip to be a little more, uh, the, the artwork on the strip to be a little more like the uh, the TV, see, and uh, do it a little more in a camp style, if bang, a little more cartoony. And uh, at first it was a little difficult for me because uh, and even though I started out doing animation, School, see, uh, I, re I really, it's, it, it's either animation or straight adventure. See, uh, it couldn't deviate from that too much. Uh, some, some artists could, can do both, you know. And I couldn't, at the time, I, I was better with the, the uh, straight adventure. Uh, and so, so he asked, he asked me to, uh, uh, to simulate more the, the TV show. And, uh, and I, I, I got it after a couple of weeks of doing it, uh, and then it worked out. And I got used to it, and uh, I, I actually enjoyed doing it that way. So what led you to finally walk off the strip? Oh, God. I remember walking my <laughs> dog, and I said, man, I, I got to get off the strip. It, it, was it the deadline pressure? Or? The deadlines, the, the, the pie was cut too many ways. Uh, See, and it just wasn't enough money to support them. Family, you know, I really wasn't enough money, and I, I had to go back to the comics. Okay. But uh, I could have stayed in it. But sure. Good. And then also, I couldn't sign the strip. Mm -hmm. See, I had to put Bob Kane's name on it <laughs> daily and every Sunday. I remember one time I had a bread truck in the background. It was Giello's bread. <laughs> It's not that. I heard about it. <laughs> now those scripts got uh, recently reprinted by IDW. You know, looking back, you know, you happy with the work you did there? Yeah. 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 Because I think it holds up. Yeah. Well, you know. See, what we have, I always worry about it. I do a job. Uh, I think Lou can tell you because uh, I did some work for some people who, uh, in his club. Okay. And, uh, so, uh, and uh, after I finish out, I always say, you know, I'm happy with it. You never know what the client or the fan is going to feel. That's what I worry about. Okay. So far, it's been okay. Nobody's yeah. turned it back. <laughs> and when you, do it over. <laughs> and when you went back to comics, that's when you started thinking, or no, but also you had an incredibly long run 
on multiple titles with Dick Dillon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dick had been doing Blackhawk, and the series ended, and suddenly he's now doing superheroes. So, uh, yeah. I, I like Boy Man. I think it's not yeah. Very good. Yes. Very good artist. In fact, they had uh, our work on display at the uh, Society of Illustrators. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Nice. Oh, that's the, uh, there was a recent show, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. quite recent. Was it your work or, or comic book work? Comic book. Okay, yeah. so you were just part of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so here are our 50s, 70s, you know, Irv and, and, and Dick Dillon and all these other uh, features uh, from the 70s. Were you getting tired of superheroes by then? No. No? <laughs> no. Uh, and it wasn't that. <clears throat> Better than roofing houses. During this time, you were also, you know, had been making guys like Carmine and Gill and, and Dylan and all for all these years. Did you guys, you know, get together for, for drinks or yeah. lunches and all? Yeah, every time we delivered the job. Well, I, I only delivered twice a month because I was out in Long Island. Some of the artists, uh, like Murphy Anderson, he couldn't work at home, so they had an area allocated to him for, to work. He was going to work every day. Mm -hmm. But uh, I used to come in twice a month, I think once, twice a month. And when I came in, we'd go to lunch, you know. I like seeing Joe Cuban, one of my favorite people. Yeah. You know? And uh, we'd go to have bean soup with Julie Schwartz. That was baby bean, bean soup with Julie Schwartz. Baby bean soup, right. <laughs> yeah. In fact, my wife used to make soup for him. Deliver his house, <laughs> and I used to open his refrigerator and see if he had any food in there <laughs> after his wife passed away. Oh, okay, yeah, this is later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. right. Yeah. So, during all this, you're picking up additional strip work. I mean, you know, you were helping uh, Cy Barry on the Phantom for you know nearly two decades. 17 years. Yeah. yeah. So, what were you doing on the Phantom? Uh, a little of everything, uh, a little pencil, a little linking. Um, now he was in Jericho. You were what? Well, he's met him. Yeah. Well, so, did you get together, or did you? Yeah. Just... Oh, I come over his house three times a week, seventeen years. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a good friend of mine. I, I, I went to school with so... him. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I know so I, since uh, I'm about sixteen years old. So you been? You must have known Dan before you worked Flash Gordon, because they were yes. brothers then. Yes. Yes. Well, the uh, side introduced me. Dan, right. Dan, see my work, and he says, uh, I like to get Joe to work with me. You know. That's how we work with Danny on the uh, yeah. flesh board. Yeah, so that was 1970, and then you went on to the, the Phantom through the 70s? Yes. With side? Yeah, right. Okay. I remember one time Dan was skiing in Europe, I think it was Kitz, Kitzbühel, I don't know whether that's Germany or, or Switzerland. But uh, we were doing the, uh, the Phantom Spot. We finished the week of dailies. Uh, we were in a story of my apartment. And we mailed it out. They never got the job. Oh. It was. Danny came back and went crazy. He <laughs> said, what, what you guys do, you know? It's not us. We mailed it. They never got it. They lost it. Back then, you, 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 know, you had a postal service that would have. There was no UPS, there was no FedEx, really. Right, that. right. Now, that reminds me, there was some week you were snowed in in Toronto with Joe Kubert. I mean, how did oh, you manage yeah. to do work then? I didn't. <laughs> how did you make up deadlines then? I mean, uh, that's been challenging. Well, well, no, I mean, took time off. To go. We didn't get vacations, but uh, you just take time off and you didn't earn anything, you know. Uh, what up? I think I was up there with Joe uh, Cobb mm -hmm. and Joe Kubert. Also in the 1970s, not only are you reading for DC, you're doing, you know, you're helping the Cy on the strip and other stuff, but my, my notes show that you've also, you did advertising work with McCann Erickson and Sanchi and Sanchi. Yeah. What sort of stuff did, were you doing for them? Uh, McCann Erickson, they, they had a project that they wanted to use superheroes. And, uh, and they wanted me to design, uh, I think it was 12 new characters. And uh, they told me, uh, they gave me the names of the characters. Uh, they told me what they would like them to look like. Female characters. Uh, uh, I think uh, Black 
characters, Asian characters, and that's what I did. Okay. McCann Erickson. And then the, there's another advertising agency, Sachi and Sachi. I did uh, work for Wallace Candy Bar. Uh, those characters, uh, the name of the character. Oh, they also, I was competing with the guy who did the, the Star Wars characters. I forget his name now, but. Uh, Neil Williamson or Um. Uh, Russ Manning? Russ Manning. Russ, Russ was yeah. doing the strip first, yeah. Yeah, it may have been him. But I didn't, I, I didn't get that. Okay. He, got, he beat me out on that. <laughs> but but the, they liked the work. And they says, you didn't get this, Joe, but we're going to give you this assignment. And that was for Mars Candy Bars. Yeah. That was a big, big assignment. It took me a couple of months on that. Now, also, you know, late 70s, um, I, I discovered that you did the work uh, on the Mar Mighty Marvel Superheroes Cookbook. Now, you were doing DC stuff since, you know, 1950, <coughs> here we are 20 years later. How on earth did you wind up with a Marvel gig like that? You know, they call you. you know. Was it Marvel or, so, or a book company? You know? uh, uh, it was a gal, uh, Ann Robinson. Uh, she's the writer. Okay. And uh, she contacted Stan Lee, and uh, I don't know whether Stan called me or the production manager. Somebody called me, and they said, Joe, we'd like you to do a book for uh, Simon and & Schuster, and then we'd like you to get the name of, uh, let's see, uh, that's a The Mighty Marvel Superhero. Yeah, okay. but there were two books. I just came yeah, up with the one. The Superhero Cookbook. What? Strength and Fitness book. Strength and fitness. Okay. Okay. Right. Got it. Thank yeah. you. Right. Yeah. So that they call me and I did the two books. Right. Impressive. And here you know, now we're moving into the nineteen eighties. Things are changing. Um, the work is you know starting to, to dwindle. And it turns out, according to my research, and Frank may be able to you know correct me if I'm wrong, the last original work you did for DC for the comics was for me in nineteen eighty seven in Who's Who. Um, you know, how did it feel to have you know this stuff start you know disappearing? Were you worried about what you were going to do next? Yeah, I was worried. Uh, uh, a lot of the artists were, or, or I guess they all were worried because uh, uh, it just took a turn. See, there was a period where you could put out anything and it would sell two hundred thousand a month. Yeah. See, and, uh, but that didn't last. See, it started to diminish. Uh, and the artists were worried, and, and that's when I started. When I remember Neil, Neil Adams, says, Joey, the, the, uh, the writing's on a wall. He says, don't put your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, telling Neil that uh, I have four kids. Uh, I can't believe it, you know. So, but the thought it always remained with me, and, and, and I, I better start looking around. And, and that's when I started. Uh, for uh, McCann Erickson, right. Sachi and Sachi, Cunningham and Wolves, Ford and Mother and Dolovansky. Very wise. Yeah, you did some Disney stuff too, right? Oh yeah, I did 21 t-shirts for Allison Manufacturing for Walt Disney. Toughest people to work with. Oh, everything's tough. But fair, but fair. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you finished working for DC in 1987, then 1991, you get John Saunders calling you. Well, you know, how did Mary Ray come about? Uh, uh, Ed, uh, Kennedy, what's his first? Jay Kennedy. Oh, sure. Jay, Jay Kennedy. Kennedy called me, the late Jay Kennedy. Yeah. And uh, he, he said, Joe, we'd like you to do uh, the Dennis DeMets. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I tried out, and I didn't get the head right. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get it right. <laughs> I think they didn't want me to feel bad. They said, uh, well, he says, they wanted someone in California. See? <laughs> but I, I just, I, I know, I, I couldn't get the head right, you know. And, and once again, they, they were right. They justified, you know, you got to get the character right. I, I know the person that Mary Ward was, took over the strip, she's having problems. But I also had problems when I started Mary Ward. 
Well, it took we, you a while. Bill Ziegler had been the artist before you, so were you trying to make it look like Bill Ziegler or yourself? No, no, no. The, the editor uh, specifically uh, mentioned to me, he says, Joe, do it in your style. Okay. And then I, I asked him, I says, uh, am I able to, can I sign, sign this? And he says, oh, if you have to sign it, I'll take it. Okay. So I couldn't sign the Batman strip. I couldn't sign anything at the time, comics or anything. 25 years on, on Mary Worth, you know, I mean, yes, it was a steady check, and yes, it was great TV. And it was 25 years. Yeah, I mean, that, but it was, you know, a soap opera. You know, yeah. how, did you, how did you keep it visually interesting for yourself? Well, um, see, and I, did, I did some side work while I was doing Mary Worth. Okay. Fan, fans would always call me and they want a particular character done. Uh, they tell me, Joe, my son's birthday is coming up. Could you do a Flash or Green Lantern or whatever? You know, and it, it wasn't boring because I combined the both. Okay. Yeah. And did you talk to John Saunders about storylines, direction? You know, did you give him ideas? Uh, not with John. No, not with John. John. Know what he wanted, and uh, he couldn't deviate from that. You know, because okay. it's his strip. See, when you own a strip, see, uh, and you dictate to, to the syndicate. See? If the syndicate hires you, like they did with me, you don't dictate. You listen to them, or you don't work. That's it. And then after, uh, I guess John died, and Karen Boyd was yeah. writing it, yeah. and she was more open to input. Oh yeah, she was. She, we worked well together because she, she was very frightened when she took over the strip. Sure. And, you know, she kept calling me, Joe, how am I doing on the strip? I said, Karen, I'm not a writer. I said, you're calling the wrong person. But I, I helped her as much as I could, you know. It's, uh, uh, I can't remember too much about that, but she did a good job writing the strip. It took a while to catch on. Like anything else, you have to get used to it, you know. And it starts to fall in place. So, what led you to finally decide to retire in May? My wife. It's a woman. It's a show, you're 88. <laughs> right, you know. They sent us a two year contract, they said I'm done. Oh, yeah, they sent me a contract. At 88, two year contract. That's great. <laughs> show of faith. <laughs> um, and during all this, um, you know, you, you mentioned your four kids. I mean, you know, I know Frank has gone into the art business with you uh, and all. Well, yeah. What about the other three? You know, were they interested in what you were doing? Or well, wanting to draw? it's funny. My first son, I named it Joe Gio. I figured, it's, you know, it would be nice if Joey could become an artist. Mm -hmm. He's got my name. <laughs> I tried everything. <laughs> Forget it. I couldn't do it. But he became one of the best salesmen in the country. Oh. My son, terrific, and but he, he's not an artist. He's bad. <laughs> I'm not an artist. He's okay, I wouldn't force him. My son Danny, I, never, I figured I bombed out with Joey. Yes, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything with Danny. Mm -hmm. But Danny became an artist, one of the best comp artists in, in Manhattan. But now he has his own gallery, and, and he also competed. Uh, with many uh, advertising agencies for the, uh, uh, what was the poster, the, the marathon poster. And, it, and out of all the agencies in Manhattan, they picked my son Danny's one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, GL. Well, and, and the fourth? And, uh, well, uh, my son Frank, uh, he, he, he's a school teacher. He originally taught American history, now he's teaching art history. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. And very well liked by his students. Really. I should have had a teacher like him. <laughs> all right, so, you know, I know you're still doing some commission work and all, but you now you're you know, more or less retired, so what do you do with yourself? Well, I do <coughs> occasional commission work for few a month. I do keep my hand at it because I do like to draw, you know. And I'm watching the grass grow in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> right? Every morning. 
That's good. So in a couple of minutes we've got left, anything I didn't cover that you would like to know about uh, Jonah's career? Yes, sir. I'm curious, uh, when you were drawing, the, did you actually pay attention to the stories or did you just do what they told you to draw? Or? No, uh, uh, I was a type of penciler when I did pencil, where I tried to follow the script because I felt that the writer really put a lot of effort in this and I was going to try to help her achieve what she wanted or he wanted, especially with Wood Ellsworth, because mm -hmm. he was an accomplished writer, and uh, and we got along well. I mean, he, I mean, I talked to him like I'm talking to you, you know. And he, he called me up, Joey, so and so, you know. Let's do this. Let's do that. What do you think of this? He's asking me what I think. The guy was a great writer. Writers are insecure. Trust me. Yes, sir. Um, Joe Sennett said at a convention a couple years ago that he and you were the last two regularly working artists, comic artists from, you know, the golden through silver age. Uh, do you have any kind of relationship with him? What was it? Joe Sennett? Sennett. Oh, I know Joe Sennett. Oh, yeah, Joe, yeah. Uh, was that my home uh, six months ago? Uh, we worked at different companies. He came in, he, he's old and, but, but he, uh, he never left the uh, title. Right. Uh, well, he did oh. the treasure chest stuff. Right. Well, he did treasure chest stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have just uh, comments. Yeah. But yeah, no, he was a timely yeah. Marvel guy. I, 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 I've been to a few panels with him. Uh, one panel with him at uh, the Jacob Javits Center. Ah. I was with him. And uh, but other than that, we call each other occasionally. But it's a valid point of, of you know, working professionals and it's a dwindling number from that era. Yeah. You know, from the golden age. You know. yeah. I'm, I'm just making the observation, you know, he's right, Joe said it. Oh, yeah. You are the last of that yeah. era yeah. who have been working. Yeah. They scare me, they say, Joe, you're gonna be the last man standing. <laughs> so don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Other questions anybody has? Yes, sir. Um, when you were doing the Batman strip, uh, it, it still is kind of shocking to me that you, you weren't making very much money doing that strip. Yeah. And uh, I mean, out of what percentage were you getting of, of the money on that strip? God. Or how, how much was Bob Kane getting versus you? <laughs> Bob Kane probably was getting half. DC was getting the other half. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then the syndicate got a quarter. I think I got about an eight. <laughs> what you have to remember is Ledger licensed that man from DC and got revenue from all the newspapers it was able to syndicate the strip to. From that, DC had to get their piece of the action, as well as with Ellsworth and Joe, and I guess Bob was the creator, but that, that's something we are not privy to. But, you know, circulation rise, you know, rises and falls, and the, once the TV show is off the air, circulation goes. You, you know, it's one thing that has nothing to do with this, but, uh, well, a little bit about the, the Batman strip. Uh, it was after the Batman strip, the government uh, asked to pick two of my covers mm. and they put them on postage stamps. Oh, and yeah, to celebrate the, the Century series. And That's right. Yeah. All the odds, but never made a penny on it. Not one penny. Huh. But they flew us to California for the unveiling. So you had the mayor of uh, San Diego. We were on the, on the stage and we had to say a few words. As I was leaving the stage, this very attractive woman approached me and I don't know who she was. She shook my hands and she said, I'm Bob Kane's wife. I forget who. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Elizabeth yeah. Saunders, yeah. Bob Kane's wife. I shook my hands and she said, Bob was very fond of you and you know, we worked together. And, uh, and that's what I, I do remember that. 
she mentioned the working on the strip and you know, like what I did on the strip. I don't I don't want to hog things, but if no one else had it, uh, talking about Batman, uh, did Bob Kane do any of the penciling at all, or was it all totally ghost? He never touched the strip. That's what that's what I'd heard. Right. From I have to be honest. You know. I don't believe he did much on the comics back in you know the fifties and sixties. Did anything I worked on, right? But, but I mean, I, yeah, I was talking about the comics as well as the strip. Yeah, no, he um, didn't do anything. Once the you know once the strip hit, I mean, sorry, the comic book hit in the, in the forties. I mean, he just ghosted it all out, and then yeah, yeah. You know, Shelley did a show them all. And Lou Sayers Schwartz in the fifties. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you know Bob went on to do other stuff. Uh, until we got the TV show and we're joking. Yeah, you know, if you come up with your own idea, that, that's the way to go. But uh, he was very fortunate. Well, he, he was the one guy that kept the rights rather than, you know. Not that he kept the rights, but he had uh, an ownership participation deal yeah. in D.C. that was unique. Uh, Willie Marston had a similar deal for yeah. Wonder Woman. And Siegel and Schuster, who were told to get a lawyer in, <clears throat> chose not to. Anyway, any other? Yes, sir. I have one more question. Uh, did, did you have any interaction with Bill Finger? No, I never met them then. Really? No, no I never did. I, I, I would have liked to. Sure. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, um, what, is, what do you see happening in the industry with uh, things going digital? You know, with the comics, comics going, going digital, digital now, to, um, download them do, on do the you, computer. you know, do you keep tabs on that kind of stuff? I mean, do you have an opinion about, you know, like print sales are continuing to slide, and uh, the companies are trying to get people to subscribe so much a month, you know, to have uh, digital access on their mobile devices or their, you know, their computers or their iPads or whatever. It cycles, you know. That the trend is going uh, digital, like you're saying, and, but uh, I, I don't, I'm not happy about it. I don't see uh, the comics uh, we, we did, you know, gold, gold and silver age, silver age, yeah. you know, I don't see that. But this is what happens, you know, first it was the little books, the big little books. Oh, sure. The blue book, the, the blue book. gentlemen, our hour is up. I appreciate your attention. <laughs> no, we'll be wearing out a few more Sharpies at the Heroes Alliance booth, so by all means, pay them a visit. <laughs> you know, Bob, we raised over $2,000 Sorry.